Did you notice that the sick pay rules have changed and you're wondering, how do you handle that in QuickBooks? You're in the right place if we've never met before. Hello, I'm Candace Camfer. I love to help business owners and bookkeepers create confidence with QuickBooks. And let's talk about the sick pay rules. Now, I have a little disclaimer. I'm not an HR specialist. I want to show you how to do it in QuickBooks, but I am going to give you the California website. So you can go look at kind of the rules. If you have questions, reach out to someone that you have available to you for HR. If you're in another state, make sure you're checking those rules, but let's jump in and look at our QuickBooks. If you are a QuickBooks online user, I have a different video for you up above or down below. You can click on it. Otherwise, let's jump in and look at QuickBooks. Before we do, I did want to share with you, there is this on the California website. You can come in and look at the frequently asked questions. The rules did change as of January 1st, 2024. There is now five days or 40 hours of sick pay, depending on if you're a full-time employee or not. And depending on how you want to accrue it will change. So you can come through, read all of this. I will link it on the video so you can check it out. But down here, you're going to learn about employers can provide paid sick pay. You have different options. So you can do what's called accrual or you can do upfront. And I'm going to show you the difference within QuickBooks. Just know this part's the most important. Employees under the accrual based need to earn at least every 30 hours of work, one hour of sick pay, what's called the 130 schedule. Okay. Now there's a couple other things to know is that the, um, by the they need to have at least 24 hours of accrued sick pay by the 120th day or 40 hours by the 200th day. Yes, it's a little techie, but let's make it simple inside of QuickBooks. Okay. So first let's jump in. So when you're in here in your QuickBooks, you're going to go under employees. You're going to choose your employees to the side. You can see these are all little sample ones I've done before. Then you're going to click on the pencil going to come down to payroll information. Of course, you should have all their personal in here. That's just a sample I made for the training, but you come here under payroll information. You're going to click on sick slash vacation. And then this is where you're going to choose it. So up here at the top, you'll see sick pay. Now, one thing I want to share with you that I often see QuickBooks users messing up when they go to pay their employees is you want to make sure that when you go to actually process the payroll that you're using you have them set up as the type of earning here is going to be sick pay, depending on if it's their hourly or that. So make sure you've set up under payroll items, sick pay. Okay. You need additional training on how to process payroll. We do have one so you can reach out to us um, and we can share more with you about that, but just make sure you actually have their hourly set up and you have a sick pay option and that you have vacation. If you find that you're, when you're paying your employees sick pay, you keep just putting it under regular hourly, it will never reduce it. So you won't know how many hours they have left in QuickBooks. Okay. As like what they've accrued versus what they've used just as a little quick extra tip for you. All right. So let's go back in here. We are going to go under sick and vacation pay. We are going to come here and you're going to see sick at the top hours available as of January 4th is the day I'm recording this. Make sure you get this switched as soon as possible and try to get this video out to you. Um, but if you already processed a payroll before you saw this video, then what you're going to want to do is you can just adjust the amount of accrued, remembering that if you're doing the accrued method, that it's for every 30 hours, they work one hour. So you can just do the math on that. Okay. So hours available is the first box. Hours used is the next box. Then here you're choosing. Do you want to accrue it at the beginning of the year? Depends on your policy. Every business can have a different policy here. So just make sure you pick the policy you want. Then you're going to have every paycheck or every hour worked. I'm going to show you how to do the calculation based off the hours worked. If you do the math and they need to have, so you're going to do the math calculation, grab your calculator. You're going to go one hour divided by 30 for the every 30 hours worked, it's 0 0.03333 and a bunch of threes. Okay. So that's what you're going to want to put here. So here you're going to click in and you're going to put hours accrued. You're going to put in your decimal point zero and you can put up to three or five um, decimal places. You can put up to five decimal places. So you're going to put in period zero, one, two, three, four, five. I think I did that right. It'll warn me. I guess I have one extra. <laughs> So just adjust it. Now here you're going to put in your max number of hours accrued, which could be 40 or because 
they could have more than one year rolling over. Be careful to look at the rules and regulations depending on your state. You may not want to reset it every year. If you do reset it every year, you would have a max number of carryover hours that you could put in, which might be 40, might be 24. That's up to you and what you've set up, okay, on your guidelines. Just know that if you check to reset, you can put in the carryover, all right? Now, if you are noticing that you don't have a decimal point, that is actually a setting in QuickBooks. So let me show you that and then we'll come back. So come over here to Edit Preferences. Go down to General. Click on Company Preferences and you might be seeing Minutes here. So if I click Minutes, you're going to notice yours might look like this too. Okay, so you can switch between Minutes and Decimal Point if you didn't know that by going under edit preferences, this is the kind of stuff I teach inside comments, QuickBooks all the time, how to understand the different time formats. Okay. So you can switch between those two. We'll put it back on decimal just for today's class. Then we're going to go back over here to sick and vacation. So you can choose, you'll see it switches back and forth. This might also help you on your time cards. If you notice that they're not the way you want them to be accruing or showing. So you can choose to reset every year and then down here you can say it begins on so on the article on the website it shares with you how you depending on how you have it set up can go between 12 month period and the different rules and regulations the time frames so if they were getting it every anniversary that's what the policy was as long as it's within the guidelines then you're good to go okay so just make sure you're checking that and then making sure your QuickBooks is set up the same way. So you can do sick pay, you can accrue the whole thing, you can accrue it beginning of the year, every paycheck or by the hour, and you can have it begin at any period of time, and you can begin accruing sick pay on a specific date as well. So this is going to be on the paychecks, this is gonna be on a date, and this is gonna be customized. The same is true down here, this is vacation pay. So let me know, are you gonna go in and set up your QuickBooks sick pay. If for any reason you didn't do it before your first pay period, go in, you can customize the accrued amount that they have available to use. Did you know that there's actually also reports that you can pull? So as you start entering it in and you come in here, you'll start seeing what's available, amounts, limits, those kinds of things. If you ever want to check and see how much sick pay they have, you have two options. You can come here and click on paid time off, or you can come up here to the reports, employees, and scroll down here to paid time off. It'll give you a list of everyone's paid time off. Look at that. Now, if you ever make an adjustment and you realize you kind of messed something up, possibly, what you can do is go back and look at their prior pay period to see what had they accrued before the end of the year that may be rolling over to the new year. So there you go. That's everything to do with your sick pay. Hopefully you get in there and get it all set up. As I said, if you have any questions, check with your HR department or someone else. Even your CPA might have some guidelines for you. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. If you'd like to get these tips and tricks in your inbox, go up above or down below and let me know below. Was there any ahas? Did you get it all set up? How's it going? I'd love to hear. Maybe that decimal versus uh, time or minutes might have been a new aha for you. And if you're thinking you'd love to learn more about how to customize QuickBooks to your specific business to set it up properly, check out our customizing QuickBooks workshop. I look forward to seeing you inside our next tip and trick. Have an amazing day.